Always my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. The time comes to Broadway when the August night summons its mists, its trumpets, its banners of neon, departs the avenue littered with its conquests. And the defeated, the once brave revelers gather in the draining light of the spectaculars to compare wounds, to grub in the now silent gutters. Find only the refuse of pain, the neon-stained memories, the scraps and bones of illusions. And you tear at the embrace of your own shadow, try to move away, but you can't. You belong to it, kid. To all of it. And at headquarters, stack the violence of the night past in a neat pile on the left-hand corner of the desk. Check the drawers for a cigarette for the road. Find none. Turn out a light with no last look around. Open a door. Close it. Walk a corridor whose walls are moist now with the first thin coat of dawn. And where it turns, hear a voice. And in it a quality that a policeman hears in his sleep. A voice tuned, whittled to penetrate shock. Listen a minute. Now, don't worry, lady. Walk to it. You'll be all right, lady. You just come with me. What's wrong, Gino? This lady, Danny, she, she wanders in off the street, says she's looking for help. She saw the police I'm light. I'm lost, please. I want to go home. Take me home, someone. Don't be frightened, Will. I hate it. It's ugly and dirty. And they laugh at a woman when she... All I wanted was to make friends. I bought new things. Paid their way. Why? I shouldn't have to pay for things. Back home, they say... Where is your home, miss? They say that, Mrs. Price. That Elizabeth, she's a deep one more than meets the eye. You could light marsh fires with Elizabeth. Where do they say that, Mrs. Price? In Vermont. In the village when I walk down Main Street to shop. Put in provisions. I hear their whispers so loud. You'll be all right, lady. You are now in Danny Clover's hands and for an out of town, a lost, unhappy... Please, please. please. What's the matter? My heart is not strong. Phil... Captain, let's get it. Sure. Quickly. Water, Gina. Roger. We'll go. Your purse, Mrs. Price. Give it to me. Don't hold on so tight. That's it. Let me open it for you. These? Yes. Give them to me. Here. Thank you. What is she on, Danny? We'll give it to her, Gina. Huh? Oh, sure. Sorry, Mrs. Price. Here. <laughs> cool. Good. Look so pale. Don't look like that. There's nothing to be afraid of. They happen often, these attacks. They come, go. <laughs> Mrs. Price, it's. Then she fainted. Shall I go yell for Dr. Sinsky? Shall I. Huh? What, what, what can I do, Danny? Tell me, what? Nothing, Gina, nothing. She's dead. And somehow it held. The attitude of it, the lost woman, never to be found again. Dead now. A policeman standing over the two of us, holding a paper cup of water yellowed by the pale overhead light. The silences scurried out of their secret places, surrounded us. And only time moved, the big-faced wall clock in the corridor. It held, held until it was intruded upon. The car outside that turned the corner and sped away. The festive car with festive people. Then I got up. And I carried the woman to a cold room and put her on a cold bed. Bed labeled for autopsy. And leave instructions. Go home. Sleep. Sleep. Be through with it. The new day. And return to headquarters. Return hellos. Shake a hand. Wave at somebody. Finally get to your office. And a report on your desk. Elizabeth Price, autopsy performed upon. Death by poisoning. Poison? Consider that. Then read on. Name of poison not to be pronounced. Question mark neatly written in blank opposite suicide. Another opposite homicide. And in blank labeled remarks, the key was found in Mrs. Price's effect. Stamped Regent Hotel. Go there, and in a plush office off a plush lobby, you get a plush greeting. 
Danny, Danny Clover. How are you, Danny? Hello, Shaw. What are you doing here? Me? You're kidding? You didn't hear? It ain't even been whispered to you, Danny? It's got to be told to you, Shaw. Your name hasn't been mentioned around headquarters since... Since I walked in and threw my badge on the captain's desk. It happened that way, huh? What other way could it happen? What have they been whispering, Danny? What are you doing here, Shaw? Security service, kid. How about that? Employed by the Region Hotel to keep the security. Houseman, huh? Security service. Yeah. Did you know a woman named Elizabeth Price? Sure. Checked in a couple of days ago. What about her? Dead. Ah. She's dead. Stumbled into headquarters early this morning. Said she was lost. Had a heart attack. She took a pill out of her purse. Poison. A poison pill mixed in with other pills. Good for... For whatever ailed her. Hey, that's dramatic, Danny. What do you know about her? A dramatic lady from Vermont, I think. Come down from the Rock Rib Coast to go dancing. What are you talking about? Come to me the other night. Wants to know where a girl could enjoy herself in the city. A girl, 45, I'd say. What would you say? Let's get off it, Shaw. So I give her a book, courtesy of the region. Things to see and do in New York City. She tells me that's not exactly what she had in mind. What she wanted... Shaw. Mrs. Price. Who is it? I'll take that call. What? I said I'll take it. Yeah. Hello? Who's this? There's the police, Lieutenant Danny Clover. I asked to speak to Mrs. Price. What's the Who matter? Who is with... this? I'm her stepson. I'm Johnny Price. What's going on? Where are you calling from? Uh, Middlesex, Vermont. Look, will you answer my Your question? mother's had an accident, Johnny. Get down here right away. Accident? Get the next train, Johnny. Ask at headquarters for Danny Clover. Poor kid. I don't know. He did that real well. What else about Mrs. Price, Shaw? What else is nothing? What else is... Yeah, there's a fact I arranged an appointment with her for the Hotel Notary Tweak You. Room 412, Danny. I'll get back to you, Shaw. Leave it outside the door, boy. I'll get it when I finish up here. Police, Mr. Miller, open up. Police, why? you were the room service friend. A little strategy I use. Make him leave the mess kid outside the door. Saves me scrounging in my pockets for a tip. Well, I'll chew on a peppermint life every little child time. Avoid embarrassment or... Tell me about it inside, Mr. Miller. Wherever it's joyful for you. Come on. Maybe you hit the wrong room, friend. I'm just a notary here. What I've got to sell, you guys can get for free. Like almost anything a hotel has to offer. That makes you bitter? Look, friend, I'm a boy fresh out of law school. Went night, studied hard, the job placement bulletins. Wound up with this, with you, who I thought was my lunch tray. Why shouldn't you disappoint me like that? Elizabeth Price. That, um, that missus who asked me to call her another name? <laughs> you too, huh, friend? She tagged you too. She's dead. They died. Poisoned. Took a pill for her heart. It didn't work like she thought. It's a way out. You studied these things in school. That's why you'll understand. I'm all ears. You'll understand why a policeman works on the possibility of murder. Lots of things about you boys I understand, friend. Others confuse me. Like, what has a hungry notary got to do with the dying of a... Oh, let's call her a guest. How come a house detective arranges appointments for a notary with a woman like Mrs. Price? Because a woman like Mrs. Price glimpses said notary loitering under a hotel palm. Tries to exchange glints of the eye. Arranges a conference through a third party, sure, the house pick. This makes it formal, a matter of pure, unadulterated business. Look, let I'm... me finish the thought, huh? The ruse the old girl from Vermont uses is she needs some paper stamps. Notarized. So you called on her and did that for her? There were papers, friend. Trustee on a farm in Vermont, last will and testament, etc., etc. She showed me. Only I uh, never got around to embossing them with my stamp. What stopped you? Liz. That's the name she asked me to call her, Liz. Liz says to me, let's postpone the doll papers. Then she goes to a part of the room where the light is more friendly on her, runs a hand through the new upswept hairdo, and stretches a pleat and says, any remedies for boredom, Mr. Moore? And you wrote out a prescription. I started to, you know. Then she said she wanted to go someplace alone. I said, if that's what you want, go ask the cabbie at the hotel hack stand. Now, there is a doctor with ideas for whatever ailment. One of the drivers out front? Mm-hmm. Someone will point out the one, friend. Get in your case. 
They could help even you. Oh, sure, the lady you described. Yeah, the very one. Where did you take her? Or will I ever forget? This cab of mine has seen sights that would chill and thrill. Characters of every shape, size, and characteristic. And this lady, fits into the type... Where did you take her? Where did... Oh. Uh, join on Greenwich Village, uh, Club Domino. She looked the type. Like I said. And me, a student of psychology, I knew just where to... Annoyed the customers, that one. Annoyed them how? Buying drinks for whoever. When all they wanted to do was listen to the music. Buying drinks at such a holy moment as for across the street. Phase places for drink buyers. Here's to the music. Sure, we got into mission. Then the cats can laugh right up. They told you to come in here to George's? Why? Look, friend, I explained it to you twice already. Next time, downtown. Downtown means cop. Downtown means cop. Yeah. Well, the dame was here, see? Good spender. Liked the merchandise a lot, ate it, drank it with glee. She left with Billy. Billy who? Billy, Billy Bailey. Sings here, ballads, you know. Where is he? He ain't showed tonight. Left with this woman you're telling me about, about one yesterday morning. Has him been back. Where does Billy live? Glad to oblige. I'll write it down for you. Bailey. Come on in, man. Nothing's going to keep you out. Sit here by the bed. You all right, Billy? You know me? Been entertained by me? I got a message for you, man. Tell everybody it's a happy time. It don't hurt hardly at all. Billy. You get used to it. It don't hurt. What are you trying to say, Billy? I'm talking about how it feels. I've been feeling it all day and can't get to a phone to tell anybody how the man walks in, sticks a knife in you. What? I was privileged. I saw the man with a knife. Who? Who was it? Try it, man. It's a kick. It's a kick. He twisted off the iron cot, shuddered, lay still. The cigarette he'd been holding rolled out of his fingers, gleamed briefly, hissed out in the leavings of an overturned shot glass. And from the building across the street, the spinning electric sign flung its colors over Billy's face. Blue, red, green, blue again. And Billy was right. There was no hurt in him anymore. Billy was dead. Listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Though August dies and September is just a few calendar spaces to the right, Broadway keeps on dancing. Nothing seasonal on Broadway. It's the street that blinks color and riot and night sounds, mottled gold from the spectaculars that drips over the pavements. Walk it, laugh at it, bloody your hands against it. Your name's written on gutter water. Nobody knows you're there. And even when there's violent death, Broadway mourns with a shrug. The cold whisper of it is the flipping of a million newspaper pages in aggregate. Column two, page three. Death of village singer linked with poisoning of Vermont woman named Elizabeth Price. What else can you do but shrug? If you're a policeman assigned to the case, if a boy from Vermont has just seen his stepmother in the morgue, if he has leaned against you and you've seen his tears, there are things you can do. Wait for him. Offer him silences and sometimes talk. Walk with him. Sit beside him. Mostly it's a matter of waiting for him. I'm... Glad you brought me out here to the park, Mr. Clover. Feeling better, Johnny? I guess. You want to talk? About what? Whatever you want. 
about you, about your stepmother? There's nothing. Okay. There's a lot. There always is. A boy grows up to be 17. It's a long time. There's that much to tell. We've got as long as you want. A boy grows up on a farm in Vermont. His mother dies when he's born. There's going to school, being in love with your fourth grade teacher, and sleigh riding snow and crops. Watching your father marry again and die. How old were you when your father died? Last year. I was 16. My father was... There was never anyone like my father. I just want to be like him, that's all now. I wish I knew what to say to you. But it's, it's happened before that other people... Who cares? I'm not other people. I'm me. Sure. I guess no one thinks of 17-year-olds as being orphans. Orphan as being very young and not having parents. I wasn't even supposed to cry, was I? At 17, I'm Cut supposed to... Cut it out, to... Johnny. I want Elizabeth back. Ridiculous, huh? Not being mature. How else am I going to say it? I want her back. Let's go across the street, Johnny. We can have some... Co- Just happening to me. Orphan. Alone. Nobody. Nothing. Dead. Words like that happened to me. What am I going to do? I... What am I supposed to do? I don't... Johnny, Johnny, come back here. The sudden mushrooming of shock. Chasm saw the woman thrown against the windshield, lost in the shriek of brakes. Lost in the shrill, insistent policeman's whistle. Found again in the throats of the crowd. Stunned. Faces drenched to the color the sun warmed them with an instant before. And the quality of half silence as I dragged the boy from the street. The sudden imposed silence to let the begging cry be heard. I want to die! I want to die! Leave the boy back to the curb. Hold his protecting strength against you. Motion the policeman to hold him back. Keep the crowd back as you leave the boy into the squad car. Take him away from the place where he wanted his dying. And at headquarters, wait for the man into whose gentleness you've so many times given the care of the stricken. Wait for him. Watch a door open slowly, tentatively. Listen to the quiet voice say what it has said so many times before. It'll be all right, Danny. Just don't look like that. I, I tell you, it'll be all right. He's a kid, Dr. Sinsky. I had to tell him I, I had to show her to him on a marble slab. He's a strong boy, Danny. He'll walk out of here in three hours, strong, young. I gave him a sedative. Together, all these things will take away this much grief from him, a pinch. You happy in your work, Doctor? Both of us, Danny, like larks. Uh, here, uh, take a cigarette. Mm, thanks. Thanks. So. Uh, what do we talk about, Danny? There's humidity to talk about. There's Coney Island on a hot day. There's, uh... What? I've been checking on Billy Bailey. He was well thought of. No one wanted him dead. No one I talked to. Uh, violence, death, sorrow. Conversation that never stops his flow between us, huh, Danny? Elizabeth Price, killed by a capsule that was meant the to... The way to kill Danny. To take a little box of pills that were meant to give relief from pain. Put among them a few poisonous pills. Then when they... Yeah. Danny Clover speaking. Henry Shaw, Danny. Get down here. Security service at the Regent Hotel's got goodies for you. Give them to me over the phone. I haven't got time, Danny. Be good to me. Get here quick. You're going out, Danny? Yeah, let's have another nice talk sometime, my huh, doctor. <laughs> I had a man on the shoulder, Danny, clasp his palm because I turned a new leaf. It hardly shows. Wait till I tell you. You hurried me down here to tell me you found salvation? You can give it to me, Danny, in return for the good thing I got for you. Last time I saw you... Last time you saw me, my back first stood on edge because you were still on the force. You, not me. Get to it, Shaw. It's an apology, Danny. You gotta know one when you meet one or we can't be friends. 
We can't get together on this thing about how Mrs. Price had a visitor the first night she guested at our hotel. A guy, a man, carried bulging shoulders right to her doorstep. It comes late, huh, Shaw? This bright day, I beat it out of the nightclub because I wanted to make a good impression around. On you, on my friend in the force, because... Who was he? Night clerk didn't ask her name. Don't remember the face. Just the broad shoulders saying which way to Mrs. Price, please. I want to talk to him. The clerk? Don't bother your time, Danny. I went over him good. Left him holding a cold compress. So anything he's got to say, he's already told me, and I tell you. A real goodie, huh? About the late visitor? Not much, yeah. We'll check it. Leave anything else out, sure? I knew it would register. You got a fine brain, Danny. Then you'll tell me why you got Mrs. Price's telephone call. A woman like her, Danny, like Mrs. Price, I worried about her. Alone in this big alley of ours, I worried, honest. That's why when I saw her go out that night, I gave an order. Refer calls to me. That the only one you took for her? Yeah. For the reason I told you, Danny, honest. Danny, I thought a good thought. Did you a good deed. Get me back on the force, huh? I'll do what I can. Thanks, Shaw. The evening's greetings, Danny, and don't bother to get up. Oh, Gino, what have you got? What I've got is we of the police have been able to ascertain nothing as to what man visited the deceased Mrs. Price. Uh-huh. What? Nothing I just said, uh-huh. Such interruptions are thought-scattering, Danny. We will mind this in the future, won't we? Sorry. Forgiven. The second matter I wish to place at your disposal concerns Middlesex. What about Middlesex? Danny. Middlesex, Vermont. Our department, which concerns itself with checking such matters, check. No record of a phone call has been found as yet of a call being placed from Middlesex, Vermont, to New York City. The last known phone call from these points was made last June by Calvin Mirquist of Middlesex... An issue on all points bulletin. Person was wanted for double murder. A person I'd talked to. So issue his name, weight, height, coloring, all the details necessary. And weight. Fidget. Walk down to the corner hamburger stand for 25 cent delight with onions and coffee. Come back. Stop in communications. After a while, be handed a slip of paper. Fugitive spotted in Club Domino, Greenwich Village. Issue orders to stick with him. Wait. Another slip of paper. Fugitive walks across the street to Faye's place. Is being followed. Then at 3 in the morning, Faye's place closes. Fugitive leaves. Goes to a place one block down, according to the pattern. I got a squad car. Went there. You back again, cop? Just getting ready to close. Him. Or at the corner table? I'll sweep him out. Don't let anyone else in here. Johnny? I'm not drinking, Mr. Clover. Having a big night, huh? I would have drank if they'd have served me. No one would. We've got to talk some more, Johnny. All right. You think you can get them to give me a drink? I want to see what's in it. Johnny, There I... must be something in it. Let's get out of here, Johnny. If there isn't, why do people come here? Places like this. All those places. Why did you kill Bailey, Johnny? I followed him. She, him, drunk. They were laughing. I've never heard a laugh like that before. That's why you killed him? Then they stopped under a lamppost. They didn't laugh for a long time. And the cab came. And she went away. She went away. And you followed Billy. How do people live in places like that. Like the room he lived in. Dirt. I knocked on the door and he let me in. I even told him who I was. He laughed. He was drunk. And then you stabbed him? No. Not right away. We talked. I wanted to see what kind of a man he was. You want to hear something funny? What? I liked him. I had to fight it. I didn't want to like him. He came over and touched me on the shoulder. That's when I stabbed him. 
Come on, Johnny. Let's walk. Okay. Hi, George. Yeah. Squad car's over there. Let's stand here a minute. I still don't see what she wanted all this for. None of the things you did were very clever, Johnny. You know that, don't you? The poison tablets in your stepmother's medicine. Eventually, she would take one. But you didn't know when. You didn't know when she was going to die. Then the fake call from Vermont. You know, I thought that was clever. Long distance call, station to station. The operator never tells the other party where the call's coming from. You're put right through. You were here all the time your stepmother was here, weren't you? Followed her. Wherever she went, you followed her. Even went to her hotel room, tried to get her to go home. You understand, don't you? Your father died. You had to take care of what was his. My father would have done the same thing. Your stepmother didn't do anything except look for a relief for her loneliness. You should have known that. You were fond of your stepmother. Yes, I was. You understand that, too, don't you? In the car, John. Get in. Mr. Culver. What? This afternoon, you saved my life when I tried to run in front of a car. It's funny, isn't it? Now. It bothered me before, Johnny. You think I didn't mean to die? <laughs> Thanks for saving me, anyhow. Get in, Johnny. I like you, Mr. Culver. You're like my father so much. The way you handle me. I like it. Just like my father. <laughs> open like a sudden flame, and the crowd swarm appears, squeezed out from under the earth, roped off by the silhouettes of a thousand buildings. They dance their fury away against the time of morning, until the sky soaks up the pain and turns it into dawn. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Tonight on FDN Presents, you've been listening to some of the best in radio drama. With Fibber McGee and Molly and Broadway is My Beat. Join us again Monday evening at the same time, 9.05, when FDN Presents Dragnet and Escape.